Welcome back to a midday edition of Elevate Your Grind, at least if you're on the West or on the East Coast. If you're on the West Coast, well, good morning and thank you for joining us, folks. Of course, we are brought to you by the Cannabis Lab. We're here with you each and every week right on Facebook Live. Folks, we had an awesome episode last week with Tara Wells, the founder of Goddess Delivers or Ganja Goddess, if you know them by that name. It was a great conversation, really talking to someone who didn't discover cannabis, at least the benefits of it till they were in their 30s, right? And completely changed her outlook on life, completely changed her outlook on cannabis and everything else. It was an awesome conversation for those of you that don't have experience with this plant. If you're intrigued, if you're on the fence, whatever it is, I highly recommend you go back and watch that video. For those of you that are huge enthusiasts of the plant, also go back and watch the video because we need all the likes and watches and subscribers that we can get. So please head over to our YouTube page at youtube.com slash elevate your grind. Make sure you like and subscribe to the show. I know you're watching it. I get your emails. I get your LinkedIn messages. The number one thing you can do to support us is please just subscribe. Thank you very much. All right, folks, it is an early day edition of elevate your grind. We might be switching some things up as my schedule changes, but my guest today, um, I I've, connected with on LinkedIn. So we're in a weird time these days, right? We meet people. We don't necessarily, especially for the past year, we don't meet people in person that much anymore. We're connecting online. We're connecting on LinkedIn, on Clubhouse, on all these different platforms. My guest today, I, don't, I either found her on LinkedIn or Clubhouse, and it sounds so creepy when you say it that way, but um, you know, virtual networking came across her profile. We connected on LinkedIn, and she puts out a lot of really, really good content, um, you know, especially for someone coming up in the, in the cannabis industry, someone who is also you know, supports a family as well, too. And one of the posts that I saw was commenting on how to talk about cannabis to your children. Turns out there's a whole lot more I think she can talk about than just, you know, talking about cannabis to your, to your family. So I wanted to invite her on, sit down and have a conversation with her. So please welcome my guest today, Kendra Stocking, the Vice President of Sales at Old Pal. Kendra, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. This is great. You are actually the second person from Old Pal we've had on the show. We had uh, Tina on the show out in Vegas as well. Yeah, Tina's awesome. She's our, our brand manager out in Nevada and she just crushes it. So yeah, she, I, we actually talked about it. She was like, I saw your name that you were going to be on the same podcast as me. And it was just so funny. But yeah, yeah, Tina's amazing. I'm, I'm stoked that you got to chat with her. That's awesome. Yeah, I suck at our own social media, but over to my left here, I actually just wrote out on my whiteboard who I had coming up so I can remember. And I'm like, oh, this would make a cool Instagram picture. It's like one of the best pictures we had because everybody saw their name on it. Yeah. Um, I've got to say on the social media thing, I don't know who in your in your company did this, but your your naming conventions for your Instagram handles are the coolest ever. So I not to like credit for that. <laughs> I was hoping it was you. I was yeah. hoping it was you. Yeah, it was totally me. Um, yeah, it was early days, right? Because I was like the fourth employee. And uh, I was like, man, I'm going to have a whole Instagram that's like more old pal. And so then everyone just sort of followed suit and it worked out. And yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm totally taking credit for the, the Instagram handle. One I can't tell you how much I talk about that. So like, you know, it, it's not something I hide. I my my day job is with Spring Big. I work on their brands platform. I know that you've, you've spoken with us as well, but I talk, when we talk about using LinkedIn for business, at least from sales, everyone's like, Hey, if you're not comfortable, you know, you make up your own. And I, I always, in every meeting, I'm like, man, I wish we had a cool naming convention like they do at Old Pal, because that'd be so cool if like we were, because it's, for, and not to blow up your Instagram handle on in front of everybody, but it's your Old Pal and then someone's name, right? Yeah. And yeah. that's just such a cool name because even like after you move on from Old Pal, whether it's good or bad, like it's still a handle you could keep and you know the story from it. So, you know, if that brain's still ticking, like think of one for Spring Big, we can steal from <laughs> you, you know? All right, I'll, uh, I'll do a little brainstorming for you. <laughs> so, so let's go back. So like you said, you just mentioned you were employee like three, four, five at Old Pal or number four, if we're settled on it. I really like what you guys are doing out there, right? Um, because uh, there, there are certain brands that realize it, you're not just advertising your product and how great your product is and the details of it. Brands to market properly need to evoke a feeling. Right. And that, and that's how you do it. And I think what you've done at old pal is you've created a great brand where you're saying like, Hey, we're not the top, top, top shelf. We're not the best thing you're ever going to smoke out there. We're good weed for a great price. 
and that's what you're going to get. And it's convenient. You can share it with your friends. And I love that about you because I think you guys are taking such a mainstream approach. You know, was that the original intention back at the beginning? Because you've worked your way up. I'm sure your, your DNA is all over old pal. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. That was the initial intention. It was like, you know, when legalization happened in 2018 here in California, um, our co-founders looked around and was just like, you can't find just like regular weed, you know, for 20 bucks or 25 bucks or, you know, as taxes and things, but like, you know, it just wasn't accessible. Right. So the whole point was to bring something to the people that was truly like weed for all people. Like it didn't need to be this big pretentious thing. It's just weed. And like, it's really the reason for weed is like healing and community and just being together and having a great time. So we wanted to build a brand that really evoked that feeling. And I think we've done it. So, yeah. I mean, so I sit down here in the state of Florida and, you know, I watch your markets from afar and, and I can tell you the experience that I've had with old pal is your marketing and your branding and, and your Instagram and all that stuff. And I think you guys have done that. Right. And I don't mean this in a bad way, but when people need to take a step back and look like the best selling alcohol is, is Budweiser and like, you know, absolute it's, it's not the top, top, top shelf stuff. The best selling wine is like yellowtail and barefoot, you know, it's good. It's a great value. And, you know, I think there are a lot of cannabis companies out there that are just saying, Hey, we put out the most fire. We have the best distillate. We have the best, this, we have the best that. And I hate to tell these folks that type of marketing is only going to go so far because when someone tries it and it's not, and Folks, being the best weed someone's tried is a very, very freaking hard thing to do. Everybody's taste is personal, which is like, again, going back to what old pal is doing. You guys are just evoking that, that simple culture of weed, not deep into the true like stoner and, and real big advocate, but it's just like, Hey, you guys remember what it was like smoking, growing up, grabbing a bag, like even all the way down to the apple pipes that you're doing. So I feel like everything you do is just like, who remembers a good, like, I, this is how I imagine the old pal marketing meetings go. All right, everybody raise your hand. Who's got a story about smoking weed from their childhood? Give us the elements of that story. Boom, apple. That's it. We're making an apple pipe. What about you over there, sir? You, well, you know, I always had a nice bag of ground weed. This way I can roll joints easily share with my friends. Boom, old pal ground weed. What's next, right? I mean, am I, am I right? Are these how they're, these how the meetings go? I mean, it's pretty simple. Yeah. I mean, it's so funny because the apple pipe was something I always joked a long time ago about because me and my husband, my husband's originally from Utah. And so he always, whenever we go back to Utah, we um, are very weary of our cannabis use. And so he would always just grab one of his mom's apples and carve it out. And like, we've always been smoking from apples when we were teenagers and stuff. And so it was always just so nostalgic. And so I always brought it up in meetings. I'm like, dude, who else smokes from an apple? And everyone's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I know it's old school, but like, it was so fun and it's so easy. You just like toss the apple and, you know, my husband's always worried about cops and stuff. So he's like, mm -hmm. gotta be able to throw it, you know? So I don't have a pipe on me or whatever, but yeah, it, it is. That's basically how things go. I mean, it's just sort of like, what's your favorite memory of smoking weed with your friends? Do you remember what strain it was? Do you remember what brand it was? No, you don't. I mean, like nine times out of 10, you're not going to think about what you were smoking. You're going to think about the great time you had with your friends. So yeah, that's what we're trying to do. That's, that's totally what we're trying to do. I commend you. I think you guys have realized again that marketing needs to evoke feeling and I would love to see more. I mean, listen, I sure you wouldn't because as long as you're one step ahead of everybody, old pal is going to do great. But <laughs> I think people need to realize, you know, stop advertising. We all, everyone sells nugs. Everyone sells distillate. Everyone sells concentrates. What are people doing once they try your product? How are they feeling? What are they experiencing? And that's where you guys have taken your marketing. But let, let's take a step back and, and you know, take the focus all, off old pal. But, you know, let's talk about you. What, what made you, you seem to have a big connection with cannabis. You just mentioned that your husband is also a cannabis consumer as well, too. You know, what made you want to break into the space? Although, you know, employee number four at Old Pal, you've been in the can, you're probably an old soul in the cannabis space already, but you started in 2018, like most of us did. So, you know, what were you doing beforehand? And, you know, what did you want to get into this space or were you pulled into this space? Just give us the backstory there. 
Sure, sure. Um, so I started um, my career actually in the action sports industry. So um, I had worked at a skate shop as a young buck and uh, moved my way into the repping world in the action C sports industry. Certainly no cannabis involved in that world. Oh, um, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, tons, right? So uh, it goes very hand in hand. But um, yeah, so worked in um, skateboarding, surfing, snowboarding, um, and uh, did that for a really long time. And I was really good at it. So I was walking into a bunch of these mom and pop shops around Southern California, and selling in apparel, shoes, headphones, uh, shoe, or let's see, skateboards, snowboards, outerwear, all sorts of stuff, right? Um, and it was all like very small stores and I loved it. Um, and I did that for about eight years or so. Um, popped into real estate for a minute because, uh, you know, things happen or whatever. And then um, decided I didn't, I wasn't into real estate. Like I wanted to get back to something I felt passionate about. Um, I've been a cannabis user for a long time. Uh, you know, kind of hate to say, I would never tell my children this, but probably started smoking weed when I was 14 or 15. Southern California girl just kind of happens. You're in the skateboarding scene when you're young and that's mm -hmm. how things go. Um, but basically um, my sister is the biggest reason that I got into cannabis because she was diagnosed with leukemia when she was about see, nine or 10 years old. Um, and then after she went through her last bout of chemotherapy when she was I'll say 11 or 12, maybe 12, um, she ended up uh, basically losing the functionality of her legs. So she's in a wheelchair, has been ever since she's now 31. Um, but anyways, so at a very young age, you know, it was always important that she, you know, extended her life as long as possible, things like that. So when you use mm -hmm. products like, uh, you know, heavy uh, painkillers, uh, it's not good for you, right? So yeah. she uh, started smoking weed um kind of right after I did so I was like 14 15 she's two and a half years younger than me so once she was like 16 she started smoking weed as she turned 18 we kind of moved out of the parents house um because the parents weren't stoked about <laughs> cannabis um but it was what it was we started growing weed in the backyard um we had a handful of plants that we would take care of and she smoked a lot of weed. Any of her friends who had uh, any medical issues, you know, would be making, um, you know, cannabis butter and things like that. Um, so it's always been really part of our lives and part of her actual medicine that she uses. I've used it recreationally and, you know, just random things. I can't sleep, stuff like that. I, I still believe mm -hmm. that everybody who smokes weed does it for some sort of medical reason, right? Whether it's anxiety or sleep or whatever, but, um, so she was the main reason I got into it. So come 2018, I found out obviously everything is like going legal and recreational in California. And I was like, you know what? Um, I feel passionate about this. I believe in cannabis. I believe that it works. I believe that it's an alternative medicine. I believe that I've always had a really good time with my friends when I was smoking weed. So I wanted to get into it. And because of all my extensive sales background, um, I had been in the action sports industry, like I said, and I was in real estate. So I had tons of sales experience. Um, so I basically just like found a link right on online of, of a distributor that was starting basically January 1, 2018. And I put in my resume and I got a call back and uh, here I am, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy, but I was really excited that I got the opportunity with the distributor. It was like nine months into working for that distributor. And I met with no, not even nine months. It was probably like eight months after working for that company. I met Rusty, our co-founder here at Old Pal. And then I've just been at Old Pal ever since. So it's been awesome. It's been really, really cool. That's so cool. You know, it's funny. I have a, a friend of mine, you know, I, I guess I can call him by name now because I have before my, my friend, Anthony, he actually works at Dreamfields. Um, you know, he was the early adopter of cannabis in our group of friends. And I remember like, you know, people would say things about him because of the involvement with weed and everything else. But also when you took a step back and you actually looked at what this kid was doing, he was probably one of the smartest, hardworking kids of, of our generation, of our group of friends. And even today that that still holds true. And he was the one that broke the stigma for me. So it's I'm sure, you know, sitting where you are today, knowing your history with this plant, like, holy shit, like I have a career in cannabis 
and yeah. it's not illegal and I'm not getting in trouble. In fact, I'm actually helping a lot of people. I imagine like that's got to be I don't know if you've ever actually sat back and it like hit you. It's like, holy shit, like I'm working in the weed industry for a living. And this is not only is it legal, but it's also an amazing opportunity for me and my family. I mean, when does that hit you? I mean, I think I wake up most days and I'm like still in shock. And it's one of the things that like we have um, sales calls every other morning for for Old Pal, our team of, there's like nine people that um, run around the state of California and Nevada that we have a call with every other day. And it's one of those things that comes up a lot because it's like, like to keep things in perspective, right? It's like, look at what we're doing here. Like, this is phenomenal. We're selling weed for a living. Like yeah. we are building the foundation for this industry like remember that know how important this is and know how amazing it is and how lucky we are to be here you know I think it's something that I think about a lot um because yeah my life has changed dramatically over the last five years you know what I mean I was laid off from my um action sports job and I would like took a bartending job with a 14 month old baby um and it was hard right and so now I'm like done way better i'm here at old pal I, you know it's 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 phenomenal it's phenomenal the changes that have happened in my life because of cannabis um so yeah i, I think about it very often oh i i can tell i can hear you getting a little choked up when you're talking about <laughs> it but it, it i think it's awesome i really do because i think there were so many people for so long that had this passion like you and myself and trust me there are plenty of people that are way more passionate and more dedicated to this industry than me and I remember me personally, you know, not the situation you were in, but like, I really enjoyed using cannabis. I really enjoyed the way it made me feel. I really enjoyed the social aspect of it. But there was literally like two or three people that I can have an open, fully unrestricted conversation about that with. And now all of a sudden, like I joked around with you today, I took my daughter to mommy and me. And I make this joke now, like I used to not talk about what I did for a living because of the stigma and I was worried. Now I don't talk about what I do for a living because people don't leave you alone and they want they to know don't everything. leave you alone. Oh my God. It's so true. <laughs> so like, you know, people ask me what I do for a living. Like, what do you do? I'm like, Oh uh, yeah, I sell marketing software. They're like, Oh, that's cool. What? Cause I could say I, I sell marketing software for the cannabis industry, but then it's like, Oh my God, you're in the cannabis industry. Talk to me about that. What do you, what do you think of Tilray? Have, have you heard of true leave? Oh, no. <laughs> do you know about this GTI stock? What should I be buying? Sir, if I knew that I'd be a financial advisor, I wouldn't be working for a marketing company. Right. <laughs> but I imagine like, do you feel the same way now where it went from like kind of hiding everything, kept keeping it under the rugs all of a sudden now you're like, now I'm just hiding it because I'm so exhausted about talking about this. All day. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it doesn't, if it comes up, right, I'll bring it up. Um, but yeah, definitely early days, early 2018 when I was, first, well, even prior to that, like nobody knew I was growing weed in my backyard. Of course not. I'm not going to tell people about that. Um, but, you know, after I got into it, it no, I was, um, I was pretty nervous about things. You know, my oldest daughter was in elementary school. I think she was just starting what kindergarten or first grade maybe. And um, so, yeah, I was, I was super nervous about talking to other parents or people about it. Um, but yeah, as time went on, it was funny, even like my, um, my in-laws who are in Utah, they are Mormon. And I was at a family gathering one summer and I think I got pulled aside by five or eight different like relatives, like to the side, like, hey, Kendra, I, I gotta ask you about some things. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, no problem. But yeah, yeah, now I'm, I'm a little more like, uh, you know, if you, if I'm going to start talking about cannabis, it's, it's like, yeah, 15, 20 questions of what's going on. What does this do? Can you help me with this? What should I be taking? And I'm like, first of all, I'm not a doctor. So like full <laughs> disclosure, I don't know exactly what's going on with your body, but like, here's what I do kind of a thing. And that's, it's yeah. been okay. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's been crazy to watch the like switch over in the last, I mean, less than 10 years. It's crazy. It's, it's such a flip-flop from, you know, the kids that, that I knew growing up that you're like, Hey, those are bad kids. Stay away from them because they smoke weed. So I can think of three of them right now that are, that are all millionaires and, and are owning, weed, owning cannabis companies and everything else because they followed their dream. So the same kids who are bad kids don't, don't spend time with them. It's like, 
pay mom, dad, and everybody else. If I did, I'd probably have some equity in that company. <laughs> so terrible advice. You also told me not to play video games, but there's now e-gaming. So I think that teaches parents like you and I to have a little bit more of an open mind with our kids. I agree. I so agree. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> It's interesting, but it's it's really cool that you got to follow your passion and that you're able to bring a lot of this stuff like the apple pipe from, you know, from your past experiences into into your work and bring that into the meetings. I feel like, you know, and I feel this way when I go into work every day, I enjoy it. Like it's still work. There's still days where I wake up and I'm like, I would love to just veg out all day. But, <laughs> you know, doing what I do with this show, Spring Big and all that together, there's a passion in me that I don't think I've had in any other job. And that's why I love doing this show because I feel like I get to talk to people that are the same way. And if not more passionate than me, you know, it was a big part of, of you growing up with you consuming cannabis and then seeing your sister having to do it. And I know that's hard, but you, you got to experience two sides of a plant very early on in a personal way that I don't think people really understand where you're like, Oh, I'm using this recreationally with my friends. I like the way it makes me feel like to me, it helps me disconnect. Maybe I'm too young to be using it. I don't know. But then you see your sister do it and you're like, oh, she needs this. Like yeah. this is actually making her better. Like you and I, we probably had some things in our mind. Maybe we were ADD. I don't know what it was, but it was fixed. It was helping us with something that we weren't aware of. Right. And it's not a huge thing, just maybe a mental health thing, introspection. Your sister needed that. She, it made her quality of life better. And you got to see firsthand at a young age in a very unfortunate way, like, oh my God, this, this really does help people's lives. I imagine that although you might've had an affinity for the plant before going through that experience with your sister, just really ignited the passion that you have today. Totally. A hundred percent. I mean, my sister is my best friend. I mean, I've, you know, we dealt with a lot, right. With her going through chemotherapy. Um, you know, she had some really close calls as a kid, uh, as far as like, you know, getting to the point where it, she could have, she could have passed away and it was really scary and horrible. Yeah. Um, even going through chemo and then afterwards, you know, having my sister in a wheelchair and just like that watching that whole process is, is insane. So, um, but yeah, it was, it's super impactful to watch how much it's, it's helped her stay off. Um, you know, what are some of the, I don't know why I can't think of them, but like some of the heavy like duty Percocet, Z yeah. Xanax, all that stuff, all it's just the opiate. So yeah. we, Florida is the number one home for opiate addiction in the world. So, I mean, I see it firsthand. My wife was an addiction counselor before we had our first child. So mm -hmm. You know, we see what it does to people's lives. Yeah, it destroys them, right? So like my sister is like a wildly full functioning person. She got her bachelor's degree. She's currently planning a wedding in November. And like she had, she's, she's living in San Diego. She owns her own floristry business. Like she's wow. thriving as a person, right? And it's because her life hasn't been destroyed by opioids. You know what I mean? Like she's crushing it. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, proof is, it's right in front of my eyes every single day. So no, I fully admit, I fully agree with that. And, and, you know, it's funny, sometimes California gets made fun of at the hippie state and everything else. But at the end <laughs> of the day, I think California kind of led the organic charge, right. And whether that was with food or just anything that you're putting into your body and that trend has permeated all the way to medication now and, and supplements, right? When we first all started hearing about supplements and everything else, what was it? it was protein powders and this powder and this and that. And it was still garbage that you we were putting into your body that contained the thing that you needed. But just like most of the, the pharmaceuticals in this world, it had a bunch of other crap in it as a delivery mechanism, right? So when we start looking at all the things that we're putting in our bodies and we look at the pharmaceuticals and like, well, well, why are those safe? Because this trillion dollar company tells me it's safe. It's safe. Like, I don't know about that. And, you know, when I take this, I feel a little medicated and strung out. When I take this and smoke this, although it's been banned, I just feel better. So I see that you guys out there kind of making that trend and, and letting it permeate through the rest of the country. And I hope this continues to go that way. And like I said, you have a great firsthand. I, again, I, I don't want to say great, but at the end of the day, she has her own business. She has a great life. It could have gone a completely other direction. And this is all from cannabis. So I think you guys are really leading the charge on the West coast and just helping everybody lead better lives. Now, taxes and everything else. This is another conversation for another time, but I, that's the one thing I really do appreciate about California. And I'm sure that you see that. Um, 
kind of transitioning in, in, into the main conversation here. So you are a mom, mm -hmm. right? We don't need to talk ages or anything else, but I know that you've got, you know, how many kids do you have? I have two little girls. Two little girls. I have one. I have a second one coming end of June. So I'll be in the yeah. same boat as you. <laughs> um, but so, you know, cannabis, actually, let's back up here before we go on to the kiddos. You had mentioned moving out of mom and dad's house at 18. If it's too hard to talk about, I understand. But did mom, has mom and dad come back around yet? Or Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. totally fine with everything. They're like, my mom lives with us now. I think she's back here somewhere. Um, but yeah, she's 100% flipped around. Um, it was sort of like, she understood what this plant meant to me and Kelsey. She doesn't smoke or anything. She's been open to some topicals and things like that, yeah. but um, she, um, she's seen what it's done financially and like with my career. And she's also seen, she understands now how much it's helped my sister. So she's fully on board. Um, my dad, he actually, when he was really young, he actually has stories of growing weed himself at his house. Um, ah, he, so the truth so, comes out now. You know, um, so my dad went down um, when my parents met, they, um, so he's very religious at this point. So once he found religion, he decided to back away and he was like, no weed, it's horrible. We can't do that. Um, so since then though, I think there's been, Again, same thing. He's looking at what happened with my career and how much of a turnaround things have happened or you know, how much it's affected our family and then how much it's helped my sister. And he's turned around to, he will never touch it. Um, but yes, both of them have completely turned around. It's all good. <laughs> That's awesome. It's funny when you say that, you know, your mom's into some tacos, dad will never touch it. I think, I think we've got to put asterisks on those statements, right? Because I think we're at a point in the cannabis industry where the main del delivery mechanisms are the traditional ones where it's smoking it or taking an edible of a certain dosage or, or even concentrates and stuff. And I think as weed becomes more commoditized and finds its way in other products, I think we're going to be shocked what we see people do who would never, never touch weed. And it's great. I, th I think people do need to go through transitions in their lives of what they believe in and what they're doing. And, you know, with your dad finding religion, I'm sure that helped him in a ton of ways. And people will, you know, everybody gets back to equilibrium at some point. So I think it's going to be really interesting in the future. You know, maybe it will be old pal ale that he'll try or, you know, something, uh, something from the beverage form or just something that you and I don't even know about yet because it doesn't exist. Right. And I think that's the exciting part about this industry. You know, you know, I actually do take that back because he has always been um, he's from Mexico, super Hispanic guy um but he um is so he's very and he grew up on a farm in mexico so very like farm boy hispanic guy and he's very like natural so like my dad never goes to the doctor ever which is horrible but he doesn't yeah. he's super healthy like crazy healthy but he has like when my kids go over to his house to like have them pick little like edible flowers and I, like come to pick them up and they have like flowers all over their mouth i'm like what <laughs> what's happening right now so he is a very like <laughs> natural guy so i think the religion saying no cannabis is a thing but i think that's starting to shift a little bit um because they're understanding that this is actually like plant medicine and my yeah. dad already has the affinity towards plant medicine so maybe not never and definitely won't smoke it but we'll see we'll see what happens in the future because yeah you're right you're right he, he I, might i see I see that trend going further and further because even myself right now, I'm, I'm, I love smoking joints. That's my preferred method, but I also understand that it, it's smoking. Right. So like if I'm in a public place or somewhere, like I do feel better. I try to go away, not because I'm worried about police or laws anymore so much, but because it's like, if I was smoking a cigarette or a cigar, I know the people downwind, no matter what I'm smoking, right. they're going to get, if, if I, if I had a, a, a campfire, they would get inundated with smoke. So <laughs> I try to be good about that, which is why it's like vape pens are so great, but they mm -hmm. suck compared to flower, in my opinion, for oh, the most part. I know, I know. It's so hard. Like, I'm so, I love flower, but yeah, I've kind of transitioned over to edibles for that exact reason. Like I'm trying not to be intrusive, you know, with my- smoke. I know. It, it sucks because I was sitting there and um, we we're so off topic here, but I love this anyway. <laughs> uh, 
I, you know, for me, it's like, I was always when I'm like, it's legal. I'm like, I can't wait to smoke joints here and this, that, and the other. And then now that I kind of can, I'm like, Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to have smoke coming in your face. I'm like, damn it. I'm still a good person. Um, you know, so it's still the parking garages and the, you know, the alleys over there and whatever it is, but just because I'm not trying to blow smoke in anyone's face, but it, it's really interesting. Um, you know, it, and it, it with kids and everything else, it, it has transitioned. Like we were in in Disney World this past week, and I know that you you went there recently too. And like, you know, I'm not gonna walk up to the gates of Epcot smoking a joint, but a, a, a few puffs off a of vaporizer to go in. And let me tell you that that 35 minute line doesn't seem as bad anymore. So, um, but yeah, I see that going. So on that note, you are a little bit more advanced in, in your parent experience than I am. Okay. You know, how do you, because my daughter is, she's going to be 19 months this next month. So I've got a little bit of time before she understands what's going on, but how do you have that conversation with kids? Because I, I'm very much open to cannabis as plant medicine. And, you know, I've seen it work on, on kids with special needs and different disabilities like autism and things like that. But there is still, you know, a camp of people. It's like, Hey, there is a child's brains developing. We don't know the best age for them to start using it. So how, when you and I are using it regularly and we are using it to unwind, how do you have that conversation with your kids about what it is, how it's used and even when you know, when they can try it or they should stay away from it. I'm just really, and by the way, folks, there is no right or wrong answer. I think we're all trying to figure this out together, but I'm just looking for someone who's a little bit more experienced than I do. <laughs> um, yeah. So the nice part about when they're really young is that you can kind of, if you're using cannabis and it's, you're smoking it, right. Like you can go outside or something like basically like they're not even aware of it for many years, I would say once they hit probably, you know, a time where they understand what you're doing, like, I don't know, four. Uh, that's when I started noticing my youngest was like noticing that we were going outside and things. I got two and a half years. Yes. <laughs> you guys, you're fine. You're fine for a while. Cause you can escape, right? Like you can yeah. trade off with your wife or whatever. So um, anyways, so once they're around four or five, I think that's sort of the time when they start getting curious. I think more than anything, what I was worried about was I don't want my kids thinking I was smoking cigarettes. I was like, ah. I don't want you to think that this is cigarettes because this is not tobacco, right? And so like, that was yeah. the big thing because the big thing at school is like, you know, tobacco free is the way to be. And like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what they really yeah, yeah. And so, and I wanted them, I wanted it to be super clear that it wasn't drugs either, right? Because those are the like buzzwords at school is like tobacco, drugs are bad. Um, that sort of thing. So I wanted to make sure I was super clear about what cannabis was and calling it cannabis too, um, and letting them know why we call it cannabis and not, you know, marijuana or whatever else. Um, and I know people have different feelings about the word marijuana, mm -hmm. but I don't like it. So um, we go with cannabis here in this house. Um, so, and especially my eight-year-old is really easy to talk to her. Um, she's very, very smart. She understands reason. She understands what medicine is. She is around my sister a lot too. So she gets it when, you know, we talk about cannabis as medicine. Um, so it's just very, you know, early days, it's sort of like your kid doesn't know what you're doing. So, you know, there's no reason to bring it up unless they are curious about it. Then it's sort of going through and just explaining to them what it is, right? You're like, this is a plan. Yeah. Like, I don't have my plant in here. It's outside, but like I have one of our grow your owns, which you released the grow, the grow your own plants on 420, which is really cool. And I grabbed one. Um, Very nice. But at a young age, um, when my daughter was like two, we were also growing weed and she would help us water the plant. She would help us. Um, we had a little bit of a bug problem. So we got all the ladybugs and she loved putting the ladybugs on the plants. She was like sprinkle, like pouring a little cup of ladybugs cool. all over the plant. It was so cute. So she was part of the process of growing this plant. So she got to see it the entire way through, um, which was helpful, I think, to show a kid that it's not just like this sketchy, weird smelly thing that's in a jar or in a bag yeah that it actually comes from a full-on plant so that way they associate plant medicine to heal right yeah um, so that was always really great so if you don't have a plant i suggest getting one later when, <laughs> when your daughter can help water it um, i've got to unfortunately talk to the uh the 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 government in florida about that one first but <laughs> yes, 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 plants i forgot about that 
No, we yeah. can't do anything in Florida. Ah, we can just right. buy it. That's it. Well, all right. Either way, you can show her. We'll get there. We can show her Google images. It'll be fine. We, we just won't tell people that we have it. <laughs> um, but yeah. So it's a I mean, school. It's a school project. What are you guys talking about? It, no. <laughs> it's a regular plant. It's a regular weed. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, so um, yeah, I mean, I think that was like sort of the best way to, to talk about it is like, this is an actual plant. Um, you have to do some, you know, it dries out. You tend to show them the process when they're a little older. And then, um, you know, I've never have smoked in front of my daughter, like actual smoke. I've taken edibles. I've done, drink, you know, had cannabis drinks mm -hmm. and things like that in front of her. And it's just like, you know, I have them next to my nightstand and I'm just like, this is for adults. This is not for kids. Um, and it's nice, you know, everybody got really upset about all the childproof packaging, but I was happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, the childproof packaging is really nice because then I know my it is. four year old won't get curious. Um, so I'm all about, um, you know, childproofing stuff. Um, but anyways, so it's it's very much just like letting them see it, letting them smell it, knowing that it's not dangerous just to look at, right? It's, it's like, you know, people compare it to alcohol. Um, the intrusiveness of the smoke is the big difference, right? Between cannabis and alcohol. And me and my husband do consume like, you know, traditionally through joints and, you know, we have a bong and we have pipes and things like that. So um, we just know, the girls know that if me or daddy are out here, um, that it's not time for them to be out on our patio, right? Like that's, that's not for them. This is mommy and daddy time. Um, and we don't, we don't do it together um, unless the kids are asleep. So me and my husband will smoke together out on the patio or elsewhere when they're asleep. That way it's not like a weird thing, like mommy and daddy are gone yeah. and we don't know what's happening. And, you know, we don't want to make it a scary thing. It's not a scary thing. It's just, no, you know, so that's kind of what we do. <laughs> but no, but that all makes perfect sense. Right. Because when you think about it and break down what you're actually doing is, is you're normalizing it for them. Right. You're 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 giving them the true education. Nothing, nothing that you said in, in what you told me was fabricated or, or even stretching the truth. It was 100 percent the God's honest truth. And I think, you know, I think there's a lot as parent, this is a hard one because this comes back to a parenting conversation, but I think there's a lot of times that we have to do that as parents that we're, we're afraid to, right? Because we want to, we want to protect our children from the, the scary world out there, but, and we want to protect their innocence. But at the end of the day, I think there is a level of preparation where it's like a lot of people will make this scary. Yeah. It's not scary. You just need to understand it. Like, I know this is dumb, but it's like the beast and beauty of the beast, right? You know, he looks like a big, scary beast, but he's a, he's a nice guy at the end of the day. Right. So, right. um, you know, and of course I'm now making Disney references over anything <laughs> else because we were just there, but I, I think I really like the approach that, that you've taken. And of course, I'm going to have to have you back on as your, your oldest approach is high school and understand how you've had that conversation about oh, using yeah. it. But you know, this, this, Honestly, you might just be a consistent podcast guest to give me parenting advice. That's the beauty <laughs> of having your own show. Um, just keep talking about how to parent kids. Yeah, it'd be great. It'd be great. <laughs> but you know what? Like, listen, there are a ton of podcasts on like, how are you selling? What are your skills? What's your marketing technique? At the end of the day, I think there are a lot of us in the industry that this is a conversation we should be having with each other because we are all working on normalizing this product and normalizing this industry for the general public. And this is a big part of it, educating yeah. the next generation, because at some point our kids will be 15 and 16 and 18, and we're all going to be executives in this industry. We're all going to be, you know, articles about us and, and all this stuff <laughs> that they can Google or at that point, 10 years from now or 20 years from now, they might even just be able to think about it. Like, what does mommy do? 9,000 articles or, you know, whatever it is. So I think yeah. it's something that's very important for us. And I, I like, there's a lot of just responsible parenting mixed with education in there, like talking about how you don't do it together when they're at home. And I really like that. I, I that's an approach that I certainly think that I'm going to adopt um, because parents drinking is, is somewhat normalized, right? And kids don't drink. I remember, you know, growing up, I never tried to really try any of my mom's stuff. And if I did, I didn't like it, but it's, it's, it's interesting. I just, it's, it's an interesting conversation. I, and it's funny because a lot of people don't like comparing it to alcohol, but I think sometimes you have to, right. And I think that's, 
I think it's weird because cannabis can be compared to so many different things because so many people use it so many different ways that you have to compare it to max, 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 medicine. You can compare it to alcohol as well too, but it's just something that there really has not been something else like it before that you can compare it to. No, and and really the the alcohol comparison is it's okay except for when it comes to actually smoking, right? So, yeah. you know, if I'm with my husband and we're all hanging out outside and we both have like a like a cannabis drink, right? Like that's okay to me in my head. It's really yeah. the like I don't want them to be exposed to like an overabundance of smoke, really, because yeah. that's the intrusiveness of the smoke, right? But if like we'll be together and technically using cannabis, but it's in like a canned form or something like that where it's not intrusive, or he and I will share like, you know, a thing of the like, what do they have? Like 10 milligram popcorn, like pot corn or something. Oh, you mean you mean all the cool shit that you guys in California that we don't have here? Yeah, it's cool. Just keep telling me about how much better your market is. I appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, they found a way to put weed in literally anything here in California. So yeah, we use it. I mean, why wouldn't we? It's fun. It's cool. Um, but yeah, so, you know, if there's like an edible type of a situation and it's just like low milligram, whatever, we're just hanging out. Like, sure. Yeah, we'll take it essentially in front of the kids all together um but if we're smoking no we keep the kids in the house and then we we switch off so and again that's something again i i think that's a great mentality because when we talk about smoking again where i look at it is like yes i don't think i'll i'll it's gonna be a very long time before i smoke a joint from my daughter um you know it might be until she's in college depending on i gotta look into health and everything else but to your point the effect of cannabis. And, and I know my limits. I've been dosing myself for a long time. I think a lot of times because we are professionals, we are adults, and we do have the stress of the world on our shoulders, and you have the stress of your job. And we're at a point in time, especially after the pandemic, we're always connected, right? We have your you have your iPhone or your Android in your pocket, and you've got emails coming in. I'm an East Coast guy working with West Coast people. So, you know, eight o'clock at night, I still have emails and phone calls and stuff coming in that a lot of times when I take a small dose or even a moderate dose, it allows me to just ignore that and be like, no, I'm here with my kid. Like this is, this is time I'm not going to get back. And it also kind of puts me on her level where it's like, you remember the wonder of things. Like you, you oh, yeah. see the joy in their eyes of discovering something for the first time. And it just brings you back to, to when you did that. Right. And you put all the stress and I, clearly I am advocating for the use of cannabis. Fuck you guys. If you disagree, it's a cannabis show. Um, but Why are you, you know, I, yeah, I think for me, it does help. It helps me be a better dad, which yeah. is why it's like, which is why I feel so normalized with this. So to your point, you and your husband are relaxing. You're having a cannabis drink. You guys are adults. You know, your limits, you know, how much you can have before you're in a place where you, you know, you can't parent correctly. And I don't know how much that is, but I think for the most part, it does help a little bit. And I'm going to stand behind that for, for someone like me who stress brings on a lot of anxiety and takes me out of my own body and takes me out of my own mind. It helps me be present. And I don't know if you guys feel a lot of that, which is why I'm glad that you clarified the thing between a beverage or edibles and, and actually smoking a joint around your children. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Um, most weekends I keep um, these little like 2.5ers on me and like, just like, you know, pop them every once in a while throughout the weekend. And yeah, it totally like connects me a little bit more and keeps me present. I'm not constantly checking my phone even on the weekends and stuff. Cause I do yeah. that if I don't. Right. And so like that way I can like go and enjoy taking my kids to ballet and think it's like hilarious when you see a bunch of five-year-old, like I don't know. Five-year-olds in ballet class just like kill me. It's the funniest thing to watch. And so it's just great. You know, it's, it's, it's not something where I ever overdo it. I'm never like blitzed out of my brain, like trying to handle my children. Cause that's crazy. That's irresponsible. Yeah. And I'm again, like you said, we're, it's like, we're too professional. We're too on top of things to just be like, Oh yeah, let me just like be super crazy high while trying to parent my kids. Like, no, I don't do that. And, you know, I don't think no. many parents do that that's ridiculous um no, I, and you do it I one time don't. and you never do it again <laughs> so there's that part too <laughs> i yeah. completely agree with that no yeah. i i completely agree with that i've 
really enjoy this part of the conversation because it opens my eyes. It's always, again, for the longest time, and especially down here in Florida, we don't have a big cannabis community like you do, right, in, in California. So a lot of the people who work down here are younger and they're single or they're just with somebody and they're, they're not, they don't have kids and they're not having these conversations. So it's always good to connect with like-minded people on this, right? It makes me feel a lot better about the choices that I've made too. So I appreciate that. And I really think that this is, is normalizing the stigma around cannabis. And I, I, I appreciate the content that you put out on social media and everything else. And, you know, I, I hope we continue to have these conversations about this. Totally. Yeah. It's been great. So, and so. this has been nice. I, it, it's so true. It's like, you know, even here in California, we do have a much larger cannabis community, but even still there's sort of like there's a smaller group of parents, right. Who, who don't always talk about it or, you know, it does, doesn't come up often because we're all just hustling so hard trying to like mm -hmm. make our mark. So like the whole parenting part of this doesn't come up even that often here in California. So no, I appreciate you bringing me on and having this conversation. It's been great. Absolutely. Well, you're not done yet because there's <laughs> one more part of the sales brain I want to pick. So yeah. old, you guys are growing. And I think it's because of your branding and your marketing. I think you've done a great job with that. I'm starting to see you guys looking at other states and everything else. You're, you're in Nevada. So at this point in time, when you have a very good consistent th consistency throughout the state of California, I imagine, you know, that market very intimately considering you came up through the Los Angeles market as someone who is now a sales leader in the cannabis space, how do you start looking at other markets and make sure that you keep that old pal consistency across markets? Cause I think this is a challenge and you never thought I was going to go from something as, you know, going from parenting to this, but I'm actually very curious on this too. And I figure while well, I had a few more minutes with you, let's get into this, but you know, is it a new challenge now? Because in California, it's like, all right, let's keep doing things to say the way that we're doing it and let's grow and expand. And you know, we'll get this person on to do this territory, but now you're going into other States and the rules change. Are you finding it more of a challenge or is it more just like tweaks here and there, but we still have a consistent message across every state. I think at the core of what old pal is, um, the messaging of our brand resonates for so many people all over the world, right? Like, I think the idea of like old school, just like smoking a joint at a party with your friends and having a good time and being part of your community resonates with everyone. Um, the there are some things, there are nuances to separate states and things like that. Um, some of our imagery, <laughs> we've had to shift a little bit, right? Because we've been su such a California brand in all of our marketing like imagery. Um, so we've had to change some of that stuff depending on what state we're going into. Um, so for like Oklahoma, we couldn't have a bunch of like palm trees, right? I mean, it's a stupid thing to think about, yeah. but like when you look at our marketing material, with which like, honestly, you said it, like our brand is like a sales and marketing brand. That's what we specialize yeah. in. So we needed to make sure to change sort of the vibe of what we were doing for each state that we're entering into. But the the core of who we are makes sense to, to, to everybody. I mean, you know, anybody in the United States kind of understands like hanging out, you, you know, you might've, it might've been a little seedier in different, uh, you know, in different States, like you had to hide a little bit more in different spots, but there's, you know, young adults all over the country who were all going to parties and smoking joints with their friends. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I feel like it's almost like a coming of age and maybe I'm a little too open about it being from California, but I, I kind of sense that all over the country, that's sort of what's happening. So the, the messaging works. It's just tweaks visually to make it work for each market that we're in. <laughs> I, I agree. I really do. I honestly think that, and I think the funny thing is, I think, you know, I think we're around the same age, but I think our generation is kind of like the last of the, the true, like closeted smokers. Like I think yeah. this, cause there, there's a group of kids um, that do a show here in Florida called couch lock news and they're all in college still. And I'm like, Holy shit. Like you guys are so open. Like it's so normal for you out now. I talked, I talked to other people, you know, kids, uh, friends of mine, their, their little brothers and sisters or, or cousins or anything else that are in college. And they just openly talk about weed. And I'm like, we never did this when I was a kid. So it's like, I look at old pal. I'm like, I wonder if the next generation of kids get it because they never had to like, 
I don't think anybody in that generation is carving up an apple to smoke out of it. They're like, yo, we'll just go to the head shop and grab a pipe. What's wrong with you? You know, like, it's I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I didn't do the apple. My thing was the, uh, the two liter Coke bottle that you made into a gravity bong, oh, right? Gosh. Where you take, you take the uh, socket, you put it in the cap there, you put the little hole in the bottom, you light it and let the water run out. That was our thing. So, oh man. Oh man. All I know is if I see the old pal gravity bong two liter, like the old pal Coke bottle, I want 1%. Just saying. Like, <laughs> okay. Talk, I'll look just, at just 1%. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. I don't know if you ever had to like smoke out of a Coke can, but I definitely did that as a young buck. And now looking back, like who thought that was a good idea? Like that's so bad for you. I was once somewhere on a, I, I'm not even a kid at this point. I was on a work trip somewhere and I smoked out of a pen like this. I it was oh. a metal pen and I took this part off yep. and that one hitter. It's just, just Hit. amazing how creative you can get. I know. Yeah. I mean, look, you got to give stoners some credit. They are the most uh, creative of all types. You know, you can find anything to smoke out of. We've, we've been using performance enhancing substances for a long time when it comes to creativity. So Kendra, this has been a fun conversation. I really enjoyed it. We, we certainly will do this again. Um, I appreciate you starting your morning with us before we let you go. Any handles, any plugs, anything you want to get out there? Let's get it going. Well, let's see. Um, of course, Old Pal, right? We're at Old Pal. Uh, we also do a clothing line. This one says Flower Power. Pretty sick. We've Very got cool. cool stuff on our Old Pals. Um, oldpalprovisions.com is the website for all of our cool. We've got t-shirts, hats, um, home goods, prints, all sorts of cool stuff that we did in collaboration with Land, who does all of our design work. If you guys are familiar with Land, it's pretty dope. Um, obviously, oldpal.com um is where you can find everything about us everything that we're doing um at old pal is the handle there my handle is that i think we mentioned it early your old pal or yeah your, why can't i remember my own handle your, your old, old pal, pal kendra. kendra um same with everybody else on our team um like all of our sales team is all just like at your old pal whatever as we talked about earlier um but yeah that's 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 the that's the plug. That's what I'm doing. Old pal all the way. My life. <laughs> Very cool. Stay tuned for her cannabis mom blog that she's going to start after the show. Um, but Kendra, thank you very much. And thank you to everybody at home for watching. I know we were on a little early today. I enjoyed it. I hope you did as well, too. If you missed any part of this interview, you can find it on Monday at youtube.com slash elevate your grind. Of course, we will be live at our normal time tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern here at facebook.com slash cannabis business group. We have some awesome, awesome events coming up for Cannabis Lab. Uh, we are actually doing a panel on technology available to grow and scale your business in cannabis. I will be hosting that panel. That's going to be coming up on May 20th. We have some other stuff coming up before it. Of course, I should be more familiar with it, but I only know my own panel because I'm selfish. But you can find that information at joinclab.com, folks. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a good one.